Hello and let's talk about the Goldman Sachs report on India. The investment banking firm in its report says that the country's GDP will shrink by 5% in the year ending 2021. The bank had earlier said that there would be a negative 0.4% growth. The bank's report confirms what we all see on the ground every day. The April-June quarter will be disastrous for the economy. This is not helped by the fact that the actual spending by the government of India is quite low when compared to other countries when it comes to relief packages. Meanwhile, the pandemic shows no sign of slowing down. Today morning's figures from the government show that over 6,000 cases were reported in the preceding 24 hours. So where do we go from here? We talk to journalist Anindya Chakravarti to find out. Anindya, thank you so much for joining us. So we have the Goldman Sachs report and of course, there are some media organizations in India which are spinning it in a triumphalist way. They're saying that there's going to be a 20% growth in the third quarter as opposed to what the report actually says. But how, <laughs> the report itself says that it's been the worst recession since 1979. There will exactly. be a 5% decline. So, but, yeah. uh, these are in, but going beyond the numbers, what exactly does this mean? I think we need to first take a should take a comparison because Goldman Sachs, uh, you know, one has to take everything with a pinch of salt. It's not as if Goldman Sachs is the greatest record in the world of predicting things. But they put big money into economies, right? They put big money into markets. So it's part of their job to do it so that they can make money. Not to basically, it's not, they have no academic interest in knowing what's going to happen in India. Right. They're only interested in what returns they'll get. Now, they had predicted that before the lockdown, before uh, that uh, India will grow by about 5.8%, if I'm not wrong, uh, in 2021, right? 5.8%. So take that as the threshold. 5.8% growth versus a 5% decline or a recession of 5%, which they're saying is the worst since 1979. And we know 1979 was basically the oil shock. We, India had a terrible drought. There was massive political uncertainty. The Janta government, there was infighting happening. The Congress was trying to break it down. Indira Gandhi, Moradji Desai was put up. So all of that put together was the first case of policy paralysis, as we know, was 1979. So that was the worst year in terms of contraction of the economy. If the economy was... Uh, 100, it dropped sharply. This time, if the economy was 100 last year, it's going to be 95. That is what Goldman Sachs is predicting. And as you said, that some media organizations, I'm glad you did call them news organizations because, uh, you know, entertainment is also media. So and none of these are news organizations. They're basically fabricators. Now, Goldman Sachs does say that in the second, what they call third quarter, which in our... Uh, Fiscal terms is the second quarter, which is the September quarter, July to September quarter. There'll be a 20% rebound. Now, obviously, if you've locked everything down and the base has gone down, it'll go up. But after that, uh, they're saying that growth will moderate. It'll be 14% in the uh, last third quarter. In the, and in the last quarter of 2021, it is going to drop to about 6.5%, which is going to make it a 5% contraction of the economy. And they actually have a very good reason to say that. They're saying that, one, of course, that uh, India were locked down more than they expected. Uh, the uh, coronavirus spread faster than they expected in their previous uh, estimates. Also, they're saying that India is not doing enough to spend. It's as simple as that. And we know what that means, uh, Prashant. Right. And this is, of course, even calculating that the lockdown is going to end by May. And with the number of cases increasing, we can't even really say for sure that economic activity is going to resume as normal. You know, one of the things that one has to look at, and the report actually gives some details there, uh, is that in March, the lockdown was only for the last week, right? It is just a... But uh, March figures are pretty bad. Right. Even CMI's March uh, um, numbers for employment are pretty bad. So it's not as if that uh, uh, March last week lockdown could have completely destroyed the remaining three weeks. So right. the things were going bad even earlier. And as uh, uh, Goldman Sachs's report shows that whether it is exports, imports, growth, everything was poor in March as well. So uh, just a quarter of a month of lockdown had thrown things out of whack. Now, uh, Goldman Sachs has given a very, uh, they said that, okay, 45% of India's GDP comes from the red zone, which has seen the maximum kind of restrictions. 
<laughs> and uh, because of that, there has been a huge, um, you know, uh, decline in earnings and output in several sectors, especially in April when things were the worst. And after that, a little bit of opening up has taken place. For instance, they've said entertainment, hospitality, education, they have lost about 95% of their uh, earnings and in terms of their uh, uh, contribution to GDP. If you look at uh, uh, things like aviation, transport, all of those have been very badly hit. So uh, all of these things, 80 to 90%, 95%, in some sectors, 40, 50%, there's been a decline in utilization and use. And uh, I think... Even Goldman Sachs will not admit this, but this is a problem which already existed before the lockdown. We know that India's economy was doing badly before the lockdown. We've been talking about how the government needs to stimulate from the time of the budget, and it did not. Right. And now it has given nothing. So Goldman Sachs actually has a nice... Uh, uh, the report has a good graph out there, which gives a comparison between how much India is actually spending mm -hmm. in terms of discretionary government spending, where... What the money government spends goes into the pockets of businesses and consumers, right? right. Because ultimately, they have to spend. Mm -hmm. uh, you can say that take as many loans as you want, but who's going to take a loan if they don't have a job? Exactly. But here's the thing, that India has, is spending in all these six uh, rounds of stimulus uh, announcements that Nimala Sitaraman did, actually just 1.27% of GDP. That's the additional spending that India is doing. Compare that to the US where that there's an additional discretionary spending, government spending of 11 to 12%. The emerging markets on an average are doing between 34 to 4, 5 to 4%. The developed markets are doing about on an average 8%. Uh, China is doing 5 to 6%. India is doing just 1.27 to 1.3%. So yeah. Goldman Sachs, a conservative, conservative output, which would never tell you they'd increase your fiscal deficit, yeah. spend more. They're totally against all these things. <clears throat> They're saying that we can understand that India has a limited fiscal space to spend, right? But even then, the, the cost of not spending is much higher than uh, the cost of spending. So... <clears throat> Even they're saying that, okay, not 20 lakh crore, you should have spent, which is 10% of GDP in uh, nominal terms. You need to have spent at least, needed to have spent at least 5%, which is 10 lakh crore. Right. Instead of that, you're spending virtually nothing, maybe 2.5 2 to 2.6 lakh crore, which is frankly nothing in the current circumstances. Right. And so in this context, again, uh, last week when we talked, we talked about <coughs> what Nirmala Sitaraman had announced till then, which is till Friday. And she announced yeah. another fresh round on Saturday and on Sunday. So mm -hmm. how do you evaluate the overall package in terms of uh, some of these aspects we discussed? You know, uh, my friend Ravish Kumar uh, had uh, done a short video clip which he sent to me. Uh, I think he, it must have gone on air as well, where he showed that how uh, when a package comes, a lot of times there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a, lot, a large amount of cardboard, then you open it, there's a lot of bubble wrap, it looks like a huge package. By the time you open it, there's a very small thing inside. Uh, I would say that uh, this is one of those cases when I, I actually once ordered, I think, uh, uh, one of those, uh, you know, pen drives. And it came in a large box. And when I opened it, there was a small stone inside. So I had to complain. And Amazon obviously refunded the money immediately. So I think this is one of those cases where you complain to Amazon that package to aa gaya, andar kuch nahi hai. <laughs> that is what this package essentially is. Right. Take loans, take loans. Who's going to take a loan when you don't have a job? I got a call from uh, someone who doesn't know me and uh, he had got my number. And for some strange reason, this gentleman thought that I probably will be able to give him some advice. And he said that I don't have a job and now the credit card companies are at my uh, thing, my... The account has been frozen. What should I do? And you can understand that this is actually a complete reversal of what governments, one after the other, have been telling the middle class to do. And again, they're saying the same thing. They've been telling the middle class, take a loan, buy a car. You will improve, prosper. You'll be able to pay it off. Take a loan, buy a house. You will prosper. Again, when people don't have jobs, they have no hope of earning extra. Right, right. The government is telling uh, entrepreneurs to take loans and hire people and effectively, therefore, telling people to take loans. Because what is this huge 
RBI liquidity, 8 lakh crore all about. Mm. Essentially, we know, ultimately, banks make those personal loan calls because actually delinquency is still lower in this space than anywhere else. Right, right, right. And so, <clears throat> and so finally, if we look at uh, the Goldman Sachs report itself, because it says that there is a great contraction ahead. What are the policy options ahead for the government right now? In case, for instance, they do want to sort of even look at changing track. You know, the government is basically now uh, reacting by saying that the coronavirus doesn't exist. It clearly, the signals it is sending is that it is not going to spend. It's basically saying, look, it doesn't exist. So you don't need a middle seat to be left in an aircraft. Are it's a short haul flight. What is, uh, why do you need any uh, kind of uh, uh, quarantine? I don't understand this. Why did you keep us in our house if all this was not required? I, I saw some report. I need to check that again that apparently some government uh, department has said that asymptomatic people are not a problem. They, uh, so essentially, the government is saying, we messed up. The economy is completely destroyed. Uh, we have no plan. We are unable to do anything. So what are we going to do? We'll pretend it doesn't exist. Right. We'll pretend it doesn't exist. We'll uh, pretend that there are no numbers. So obviously, India has a very low, apparently... Uh, <laughs> rate, infection rate compared to population, you hardly tested anyone. 20-25 lakh tests done. Probably the lowest per, per uh, uh, million, million population. population. Right? So, uh, we are essentially in a situation which we, if this government actually pretends that there is no need for a lockdown, why this lockdown came up in the first place, no one knows. So, right. that's, that's the main point. It's a clear case of mismanagement and I frankly do not expect anything from the government. There is one point that I would like to end with. And I think that, uh, you know, the government is a little worried. The central government, I think, is a little worried about the political impact of what has happened with migrant laborers. Now, as you know, I've been arguing that once a migrant worker goes back home, they kind of get some amount of relief. And they, then they forget about what uh, is what has happened to them. But increasingly, there is a sense that migrant workers might not come back to work. Right. Now, this is a double-edged sword. You can keep giving, uh, you know, basic subsistence level existence to migrant workers by giving them gov money through government schemes, free food, some amount of work, 20, 30 days a year, which will keep them at subsistence level. But once they get used to that, once they think that this is all we can get, that there is no point in going to... Uh, city where I could get stuck, which is a, which doesn't care about me, right? And then that's a problem, which is why some of these journalists I see, you know, anchors, popular news anchors, on Twitter for the last two days, they've been criticizing Yogi Adityanath hmm. for holding up buses uh, that were being sent by the Congress yeah. for migrant workers. Now, you wonder what is making them, these same people who, was, who were, you know, tweeting that, oh, the Congress has sent a list of buses, which are actually two-wheelers and stuff like that, apparently. They were criticizing and making fun of it. Uh, they constantly make fun of the opposition. They constantly say, Modi ji is great. What is making them, these same people who covered Yogi Adityanath feeding his cows and stuff like that, uh, what is making them criticize? I think there is some amount of fear in the central leadership, which is essentially Modi Shah, that this might cost them politically, which is why these people have been told to criticize that kind of move. Because I don't believe in anything comes from their conscience, to be right. absolutely honest. So there could be some political impact which will force the Modi government to act quickly. I don't know. Sure. Thank you so much, Anandya, for talking to us. Thank you. For sure. In our next segment, we bring you a report from Karwai Mohabbat on the ground situation in Delhi. The livelihoods of lakhs of people have been destroyed and there has been almost no measures to help them recover in a sustainable way. Here is a report from the slums of Tughlaqabad. अब बताओ ऐसा पानी पिला पिला के हम अपना टाइम पास कर रहे हैं और मोदी और केतरीबाल दिल्ली में ऑल इंडिया में मशहूर है कि हर गरीबों के हम सहायता करेंगे मदद करेंगे किसी बात की परेशानी नहीं आने देंगे अब वो गरीब इतनी परेशान है अब वो कहां जा रहे मोदी केतरीबाल क्यों नहीं मदद कर रहे वो अब
आज हम यहाँ तुगलक आबाद दिल्ली के किले के साय में ये एक पुरानी झुग्गी झोंपड़ी बस्ती है सामान्य वक्त में भी बहुत गरीबी यहाँ रहती है आजाद मार्केट से लाते हैं हम पहले तब बाल्टी बेच के पुराने कपड़े खरीद के वो बेच के फिर हम अपना गुजारा चलाते थे बाजार लगते वहाँ पे कोई गाड़ी पहुँचने वाले कपड़े होते हैं ऐसे बयान होगी बड़ी बड़ी गाड़ी होगी वो पहुँचने के लिए कपड़े ले जाते हैं कोई मशीन में फैक्ट्री में वो कपड़े ले जाते हैं बाल्टी टो वाले को अपना पैसे भर के अपना बचता है हजार पंद्रह रुपये हमारे बच्चों को चाय पानी के लेने देने के लिए काम कार्य चल जाता था हमारा तो मेरे बुढ़ा अंधा है भीख मांग के खाते और बहु बेटे कबड़ा बिनते थे वो देते बीस रुपए किलो दस रुपए किलो पांच रुपए किलो जैसा माल देखता है जैसा लेता है होता है एक दिन में पचास रुपए भी कमा लेते बच्चे ओन औरते ओन सौ रुपए भी कमा लेते खर्चा चला लेते क्या करे लोग बताते हैं कि अलग अलग तरीकों से इनका रोजगार चलता है कोई राजस्थान के गाँव से आए हैं कोई मध्य प्रदेश के गाँव से है हम रोटी खाने वाले हैं सर चावल तो खाते भी नहीं हम फिर भी हम मजबूरी में खाने पड़ रहे हैं गर्मी भी बढ़ रही है पुलिस उनको धकेल के कहता है कि आप घर के अंदर रहें घर एक छोटी सी झोंपड़ी में असहम हो जाता है इतने सारे लोग तंग तरीके से और कोई सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग का तो सवाल ही नहीं है मक्खी है मच्छर हैं तो वो निकलते हैं तो पुलिस उनको भगाता है भगाते हैं लाइट नहीं आती है मच्छर बहुत खाते हैं क्या करें हाँ गर्मी होती है पन्नी डारा की पन्नी की भी गर्मी हो जाती है पानी देखो बाबू जी यहाँ से पार्क के अंदर जो पेड़ पौधों के अंदर पानी देते हैं ना वो पानी भर के लेके आते हैं वो वो इधर भी नहीं भरने दे रहे पार्क के अंदर इधर भी नहीं भरने दे रहे अपने टैंकर को बोल बोल के हाथ पर जोड़ो टैंकर मंगवाए वो उससे पानी भर भर के बैठे हैं चार चार पांच पांच दिन से जितने पानी की जरूरत है उतना पानी भी खाना पकाने में या पीने में जितने जितने पानी की जरूरत है वो भी उन्हें नहीं मिल मिल पा रहा है आप जो राशन दे के गए थे वो ही खा के बैठे हुए वैसे तो चावल आते हैं कच्चे पक्के चावल वो ही खाते हैं बीमार हो जाते हैं बच्चे भूख कहीं दूर नहीं है भूख तो आज हम देख रहे हैं इन घरों में भूख आज वर्तमान में तीन चार पाँच दिनों से कई लोगों ने कहा है कि वो खाना नहीं खा पाए हैं जो थोड़ी बहुत सहायता मिल रही है उससे बहुत कुछ दिनों तक उनका काम चल रहा है अंदर तेल था अंदर हल्दी मिर्ची वगैरह अंदर सब कुछ आटा चावल सब थे तो हमारा पंद्रह सोलह दिन निकल गए थे उनसे 
इसीलिए हम याद कर रहे थे कि वो भैया आ जाए वो हमारा उठाने का लिए राशन पानी दे जाए तो वो टाइम जब से इन्होंने सुना है कि लॉकडाउन और बढ़ गया है बहुत बेचैनी है कि हम लोग कैसे इन दिनों को गुजारेंगे इसको बेच के दाल बच्चों को दाल उठे गुजारा तो करते थे बहुत जी बिल्कुल जाने नहीं दे रहे गए आने नहीं दे रहे हमारी तरफ से मोदी को हम जो ऐलान दे रहे हैं केजरीवाल को कि हमारी अब जो कोरोना बारिश से इतनी परेशानी हो रही है हमारी मदद करो मदद नहीं करोगे इंसान मरेगे ऐसे बोलेगे बीमारी फैली है इनको ले जाओ ले जाओ जला दो फटाफट ऐसा थोड़ी ना होगा फिर ऐसे तो सारे मर जाएंगे हम भूख के मारे यही ये दिल्ली की कहानी है तो दूर जो इलाके हैं देश के उनमें उसमें क्या स्थिति होगी ये तो कल्पना करना भी आ, मुश्किल है दैट्स ऑल वी हैव इन दिस एपिसोड ऑफ लेट्स टॉक विल बी बैक ऑन मंडे विद द लेटेस्ट ऑफ द डे Until then keep watching news click